You, over there. Wheel of Time book fans. Come here, come here. I need, I need to talk to you. I need to ask you a couple of questions real quick. Welcome, friends. It's your man, Z, and I'm not here so much to spoil episode six. I just, I have questions, especially for the book fans, and I'm a little confusion about what I'm seeing here. Is Wheel of Time, the books, really this gay? I'm just curious. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I am confused because here I'm thinking this is like a high fantasy thing that's inspired by... Lord of the Rings and Tolkien, yet here I have an Amazon product that wants to be Game of Thrones, but is somewhere in between and not making a lot of sense to me here, because it sure seems like everybody in this show is in some sort of gay relationship, which it's not so much the relationships that bother me, but it's the issue that the relationships all seem completely unnecessary. So when I think of Lord of the Rings, and I think of Gandalf and Sauron exchanging blows, crossing staffs, and having a wizard battle. I don't really imagine them stopping in the middle of the wizard battle to exchange wizard staffs or play with their staffs. I really think of it like high fantasy. There's not a lot of that stuff in there. I mean, what if all of those hobbits we're in Hobbiton, and he just invited them all over. You know, Bilbo and all the rest back into his little hobbit hole. And just had a big orgy for no reason. <laughs> I'm just confused after watching this. So, the main character, Moraine, is kind of chilling out and doing a bunch of stuff. And... First, the episode starts, and I, I was thinking that this would be some sort of character development for a character we have not yet seen. So we see this little girl and the, and the trials and tribulations that she goes with with her father. How she's an outcast, and he needs to protect her by sending her away. And touching little story, didn't mind it at all. And then uh, the only thing I thought that was weird was like, she has a lot of tattoos. She's pretty young to have those tattoos, but eh, what do I know? So anyway, we eventually come to find out that she is the lady who's in charge of all the Aes Sedai, those witches up in that white tower. And here I would think that that story would have some sort of connection to her demeanor or how she does it. It doesn't give me any insight into her character whatsoever. I mean, not from the actions that I saw. She's just basically like a... She's one function in the entire episode. So here you have... It would be like, I just... Uh, I just don't understand. Because I want to like this show, but it's really distracting when you have like... And I might be misreading this, but like all the male warder guys get together and they leave to have their own little party and they're snuggling each other and then you have you know you have this this priestess Moraine who's having a highly inappropriate relationship with her boss one that would probably end up in having them both be killed and then to the point of and I guess this is a spoiler for the episode so be aware that she would end up you know they would either both being killed or the fact that she'll never see her again because she's gonna see her maybe in another life like what <laughs> but you've been gone for you she's like wandering around for years doesn't really have a relationship with this lady and then they have a relation their secret window relationship where she walks through the window thing and then has a relationship and then and then they, it's just, and then there's the nudity right and this the show is very confusing to me because it wants to be game of thrones in the sense that it has like the, the violence and the nudity and the swearing in Game of Thrones was a fabric of the world that they had crafted, right? Everyone's kind of sleazy. I mean, one of the most important relationships in the entire show is based on incest. And uh, like all of it makes sense, right? It's about 
airs and and but this is like more on the tolkien side right where it's like high fantasy but then people random like there's random like super acts of violence that are usually relegated to cgi like there's a couple like one or two stunning moments of violence in this show and then it's like nothing for episodes and episodes and then they have like uh you know they have the whole thing where it's like n no nudity at all and then randomly we're in a room of darkly shrouded women of all shapes and sizes being naked for i guess bath time whatever like make up your mind amazon what are you doing either um, embrace the high fantasy or don't and then like the relationships for no reason like the relationships like they were visiting uh, brothels in Game of Thrones because that's how people that's how Littlefinger was making his money and manipulating people and then you know Tyrion would frequent them and, and there were reasons behind these things here there's like no reason for like it doesn't add to the story it seems like they were added on afterwards so that's where I need your help fans I know you guys have watched a couple of our Wheel of Time episodes and I guess I can link some of them up here somewhere I need to understand. Am I missing the boat here completely? Like, what is going on? I have no real frame of reference on the books. I know there's like 12 of them, and our fans have kindly told me some words, but I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I, I am confusion. Very much so. I And then that makes me think like Lord of the Rings is absolutely 100%. I heard they hired like a sex coach or something. Like it's going to be, what is going on here? Oh, I don't understand. Like make it make sense. You know, like did the, did that relationship need to happen? Like what was the point? I don't really understand. I feel like they just, it was an added bonus for salaciousness on something that's not very salacious now like it's not a big deal like we're supposed to be shocked that these women have a relationship i just, i don't i don't know what they're going for so i don't know i i need help but that's where you guys come in so i'm not gonna i don't i can't tell if i like this or not it kind of reminds me of um when i watched the star wars prequels for the first time and i watched the phantom menace and the after I watched it, I said to my friend who had watched it with me, I said, did, did I like this? Did I, in fact, enjoy this? And uh, he said to me, I'm going to have to watch this like four more times to decide if I liked it. And I was like, hmm, I'm pretty sure I didn't like that. So I don't know. Give me some help, please. Um, we are such a tiny, small channel. We could definitely use your help. If you could just give us a subscription, sir, it would be greatly appreciated. We would gladly accept your your subscription. If you see the little red subscribe button, it means you're not subscribed. But we would greatly appreciate if today was the day that we earned it. And a like would help as well. And some comments, please. Straighten me out. Because I don't know what's going on here. How far have they veered off of this, this, this thing? So... Be sure to catch our full-length audio podcast. You can catch it anywhere you can get podcasts. Spotify, iTunes, all sorts of fun places. I know you guys are out there listening, so thank you for that. And you can catch us on a live stream, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. Come party with the Party Time Podcast. That's Our Reviews Will Kill You. And uh, I am on to the next one.